Today's video is one that I have been promising for a couple of weeks now, as I'm going to go back and take a look at all the first year Power 5 head coaches, and we're going to evaluate and grade their first years on the job. But first, before we get started, be sure to subscribe if you love college football, give the video a like if you want to help the channel, suggest another topic I should do next, and turn on post notifications so you never miss another upload of mine. Now let's get started. There were 12 new Power 5 head coaching hires this past year, and we are to go in order with the coaches who were graded lowest first, and eventually get to the hires that were most highly touted. I'm using an app on Sports Article's preseason grades to compare this to, and let's get into it. Carl Durrell spent some time in the NFL and took over the Colorado program after Mel Tucker bolted from Michigan State. Many immediately glossed over this hire, and it was given a C-. Personally, nothing excited me about this hire, and it was honestly the worst hire in my opinion, and I thought Colorado would become more irrelevant. Boy, did they prove me wrong, though, as him and the Buffaloes shocked the Pac-12 in 2020, and they were in the Pac-12 South Division title race until their late loss to Utah. This shocked a lot of people, and they also played in the Alamo Bowl at Texas. Sam Neuer is an underrated quarterback, and I give Carl Durrell an A, as he took a team with no hype and made them relevant in one year. Congrats to Carl, you may be on to something in Boulder. When I saw Sam Pittman was hired to be the next head coach of Arkansas, I began to laugh. Arkansas had fumbled the bag massively on their hire with Chad Morris, and then they took a chance on an offensive line coach. Nothing made sense about the hire, that was until you looked into it a little bit more. I saw he had experience, the ability to recruit, and what he brought to the table. The article gave him a B- as a hire, and it's easy to say he exceeded expectations. With Felipe Franks at quarterback, the Razorbacks won three SEC games, but they could have won a lot more if not for a terrible call in the Auburn game and a blown lead against Missouri. Arkansas just had a different feel to it in 2020, and I'm excited to see what Pittman can do in the future. I give him a B plus for the season, and it would have been an A had he not ended on a four game losing streak. Mel Tucker went five and seven in his first year at Colorado after coming over from the defensive coordinator position at Georgia. He was a late hire, and he took over for Mark D'Antonio after his retirement, and Tucker was behind the eight ball from the very beginning. He was given a grade of a B, but I knew he would struggle massively. He put Colorado in a really bad spot, and it would come back to bite him karma-wise and the fact that Colorado was much better without him. Besides the win over Michigan and Northwestern, and the development of some young guys, there was not a lot to like about Tucker's Spartan so far, and I'm very skeptical he will ever make it work there, especially with the rise of Indiana, Rutgers, and Maryland in the East. Michigan State originally wanted Fickle, and I don't think Mel Tucker was ever in their long-term plan, so his lease is going to be short, and let's see what he can do. I give Tucker a C for the season, and I need to see a lot more out of him, or he will likely be gone. Ah, the hire I was most excited about in the 2020 coaching carousel. The article gave Elia Drinkwitz a B plus, and I know I'm extremely biased, but he was the guy I wanted all along, and I'd give him an A plus when he was hired. After Barry Odom was fired, many wondered if Drinkwitz could turn the program around. Mizzou won five games in 2020, recruiting is better than it's ever been before, and he's building a culture of winning and no nonsense. He has a young star quarterback in Connor Basilac, they're getting a ton of transfers that were highly rated as recruits, and they have a ton of weapons and talented players coming into the program. I don't expect Mizzou to win the East next year, or maybe in the next couple of years. I think they can easily become the third best team in the division, pull off some upsets, recruit well, and be a good team. Preseason expectations had them picked to finish sixth, and Drinkwitz had them in third place by the end of it, so I give him an A, and he's my second highest graded new hire. Jeff Halfley was a hire that I thought had major boom or bust potential, and that's what many others thought as well. He was originally given a grade of an A-, and I thought that was a little bit high for him to be honest, but he quickly proved why he was given that. The Boston College offense was so much better in 2020, recruiting is up, and they are getting more talent on the team. They almost beat Notre Dame, and they were beating Clemson for four quarters, but they lost in the end. Former five-star recruit and Notre Dame transfer quarterback Phil Dracovic and wide receiver Zay Flowers are one of the most underrated duos in the country, and the future looks really bright in Chestnut Hill as long as Halfley is there. I give him exactly what he was rated, an A-. Dave Aranda was one of the most exciting hires of the 2020 carousel, as he was a big-time defensive coordinator at Wisconsin and at LSU, and that's why he was given an early grade of an A-. After Matt Rule left Baylor in a great spot, many thought that the Bears would pick up right where they left off. He had a great quarterback in Charlie Brewer, but without Denzel Mims or a lot of other guys, the passing game was horrible, the running game was terrible, and the defense wasn't great, and the whole entire Baylor team was terrible in 2020, and it seemed like the program took 10 steps back and Aranda was in over his head. They went 2-7, and seven, but that makes it seem like it was better than it was, and sadly, I give Aranda an F, and he was the worst coaching hire on this list. Greg Schiano is the only coach who will ever do well at Rutgers, and that's why he was given an A- grade. He took Rutgers all the way back to being competitive with the least amount of talent in the Big Ten, and the only Power 5 school that he had more talent than was Kansas. In his first year, he managed to win three games, and they were close to beating both Michigan and Indiana, 
So Rutgers football looks like they're in a great spot, and with more time and talent, Rutgers football could be back to being competitive. Because of how bad Rutgers has been for years, and what he did during this weird COVID season, I give Shiano an A+, and he performed better than any other first-year coach in college football. Jimmy Lake was an assistant coach for Washington under Chris Peterson, and when he retired, Lake was the natural replacement. It wasn't the flashiest hire, but I think it was the right hire for the program, and it was given an A- as a grade. The Huskies only played four games in 2020, so it's very tough to judge how Lake did, but they did go 3-1 and, and won the Pac-12 North, so you can say it was a pretty successful year, but we need to see a lot more. Lake is a great recruiter, and he has some talented quarterbacks on the roster, and five-star quarterback Sam Heward's coming in next year, so I would say Washington is in good hands, and I give him an A-. The weirdest coach in college football decided to leave Wazoo for Stark Vegas, and a lot of people thought he was going to do well. I personally did think he was going to do well, and I gave him an A as a grade, but some were skeptical. He brought in transfers KJ Costello and Tyrell Shavers, and I thought they were going to be a solid team. Then the LSU game happened, as KJ Costello looked like a Heisman frontrunner, and they beat the number 6 defending national champions LSU, the hype was unreal, and some wondered if they could compete with Alabama from the West. Outside of a win over Missouri, the Bulldogs were terrible the rest of the year, and it was painful to watch at times. Had Leach just gotten the team to 500, it would have been a pretty good success, and I would have given the higher good grade, but they fell off massively and set the tone for success in Week 1 with LSU, so it makes them look even worse. I give Leach a D in his first year, and maybe the air raid isn't going to work in the mighty SEC. Nick Rolovich was the third best hire for some reason, and I could just never wrap my head around that. He never did anything amazing at Hawaii, and Washington State is one of the hardest jobs in college football. He had a nice young freshman in Jaden Delora, but the Cougars went 1-3 and, and just didn't look good at all. Washington State's only going to do well at Mike Leach, and I don't think Rolovich is the answer, and I think that the Cougars needed a different guy for the job. I give this hire a D to begin with, and I stand with that now. There was a ton of hype with Lane Kiffin returning to the SEC to come down to Ole Miss, and I knew he'd have a pretty solid offense. I mean, we all knew that. Matt Corral and Elijah Moore both became superstars, and Corral could seriously be a dark horse Heisman contender in 2021. They had a terrific offense, but the defense was terrible. I mean, they were terrible. He did recruit well, though. He made Ole Miss fun to watch, and he's a funny personality for years to come. And then they also beat a good Indiana team in their bowl game. So I give Kiffin a B for his first year, only because you cannot forget about one whole side of the ball, aka the defense. Finally, Mike Norvell was my favorite hire of the 2020 carousel, and I thought he was going to do a great job in his first season. He was the highest graded hire, but things became a bit shaky with some off the field issues over the summer, and combining that with the massive culture change that was needed, things were going to be tough for him. James Blackman and Jordan Travis were not the answers at quarterback, and the season had a ton of chaos. Outside of a nice upset win over North Carolina, the season was pretty much a mess for the Seminoles, and they didn't show as much promise as many would have liked. I give Norvell more slack than others, as I give him a C grade, I think he'll get Florida State football turned around in time, but judging off his first year, I would have liked to have seen a lot more. Well here it is, I finally gave you my first year 2020 head coaching grading hires, and let me know what you think. Is there a coach you disagree with? Let me know what you think of the coaches down in the comment section, and what are some of the coaches you like for the 2021 carousel so far? What did you think of my grade and analysis of your coach? And let me know another topic I should do next down in the comment section. Before you go, be sure to give the video a like so it helps the video and channel grow. Subscribe if you're new and you haven't already, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.